Those are buyer activities. Okay. Those are buyer focused, buyer heavy activities. Okay. Right. So you're going to ask them usually three or four things. What's your t- What's your budget? What's your time frame? Uh, are you working with an agent? Are you pre-approved? Well, number one, he's like, don't listen to the haters. He said, also, don't listen to the people that are praising you either. Don't let that get too much to your head either way. It's the people that are sitting back, watching your content quietly, not commenting, not even liking, but they love you. But there's no, like you just said it, there's no right or wrong way there's not. to run your business. It's what makes you feel authentic. Even like, we could program the AI to automatically ask that prior to actually booking you on an appointment. And they watch it and they're like, man, this guy's good. Those are the people that you're really doing this for. You know what I mean? It's a huge opportunity. If anything changes, it's going to be a huge opportunity for people who are committed Correct. and are willing to work. When I lost everything, kind of like how we're going through now, this downturn that taught me, okay, you know, I've got to learn how to create lifelong relationships yep. with people. Because you have so many expireds, so many FISBOs. Just yeah. 1%, it's coming out in your tone. Ooh. What is going on? My name is from Carl's Baronetti, and welcome back to another episode of the Gold Bar Podcast. This time we are going live from Las Vegas and we are switching things up. Instead of doing a one-on-one podcast, uh, we're going to be doing this with four people at the table. So the person to the left of me, as you may or may not know him, is Ricky Carruth. Sir Ricky Carruth uh, is one of the biggest coaches in the entire industry here to deliver value. Next to Ricky, on his left, we have Mr. John Sai, president of EXP Canada. And not only is John a top producer and a team builder, but he is a social media influencer completely dominating the landscape when it comes to the Canadian real estate game. And to the left of John, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name. Let's just call him DK for now. DK is a top producing team leader. He pushes houses like it's his job, and he has a ton of value to provide when it comes to this episode. So I'm extremely excited to get started. Let's get right into it. All right, and and so listen, guys, the thing is, is yeah, that was a good intro, man. Good, good yeah. job. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Good job. Good job. <laughs> intro doesn't exist. So the thing. So this we've got is real. two agents yeah. from Canada. Yeah. And we got two agents from Alabama. Okay. You're you're close enough I'm to Alabama, Alabama now. Yeah. Florida, Alabama. Like Florida, Alabama. the Canadian market, the real estate market. Like right now, you know, we've got high interest rates. You guys have high interest rates. Yep. Right. Um, we have no inventory. You guys have no inventory. Right. We have multiple offers in some of our areas. You guys have multiple offers. Like, what is the market there compared to, do you guys, like you, I'm sure, know what the market's like in the U.S.? Is Canada going through the same thing we are with the real estate market? Yeah, I mean, where we are at, uh, we're right now about five months supply now. So oh, it's that's up. a lot. It's caught up. So it yeah. went way up. What did it get down to? It got down to two months. Yeah. Yeah, beginning that's, of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And in Ottawa, we've got over 5,000 active current listings right now. But if you go back a year ago, there was 2,000 active mm-hmm. listings. So right. it depends where you're talking about. I'm in the nation's capital. So our inventory is rising dramatically. Because what happened was when COVID hit, all the builders shut down, right? All the labor shut down. And then when everything opened up, all the builders recommenced their builds. But all the people that bought those builds two, three years ago bought at 2%. Now that they're closing three, four years later, they can't close. So all the builders now have all this inventory. You got buyers they can't close because the rates are like seven, eight percent, and interest is high. But inventory is also rising. It's something we've never really seen. Do y'all have um, thirty-year fixed mortgages there? You can do, do a thirty-year amortization, you can, you but can. it's a five-year five fixed. Every five, five years, you got to yeah. refi. See, yeah, wow. that's wild. See, yeah. here in the U.S., you know, we got thirty-year fixed all the way for thirty years. Yeah, mm. a lot of countries are on that five-year. You know, yeah rotating it really changes the entire game yeah <laughs> yeah yes. big time cool so you were saying that you're greek yeah born and raised in ottawa and canada podcasts but greek, were actually created the greeks created podcasts <laughs> what yeah for sure you guys don't know that Look like it up. your great great granddaddy <laughs> it was a thing? cousin for sure uh put put Katsopoulos, i think and they shortened it to podcast damn dude how how can like how can somebody like say I invented that. It's like saying like I invented water. You know what I'm saying? No yeah. Greeks invented water. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he says that all the time. Everywhere we go, he says uh, Greeks invented Chinese. <laughs> and you really? just have to be like, Damn. okay, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're just proud. Just proud to invent shit. No, no. So, so what are you up to right now? Like, um, what's your thing? My thing right now is uh, I'm discovering that a lot of agents have a lot of problems with systems. They're mm. going out of their way to build their entire data base. They're they're working their social media content game. They're going out of their way to run ads. And like every agent is so focused on strategy right now, 
But all the strategies lead back to one thing, them having to nurture the majority of the people that they actually stay in touch with. Mm. Yeah. And no one is doing that. So like in yeah. a time right now, you guys mentioned like inventory is rising and it's getting harder to close deals. I tell everyone like if you were going out there and making 200 calls a month last year and it was getting you X amount of results, you now have to go out there and do 400 calls to close the same amount of deals. Yep. Yep. And where I'm tackling it is like, okay, I don't think I'm gonna see double the production from agents anymore. It's not like they're gonna double their work ethic now. So what if we could help them build better nurturing and follow-up systems to go out there and do that for them? And I've been doing that with AI. <laughs> We've been experimenting with me and Ricky and like, it's been pretty cool. So how do you guys wanna go ahead and steer this conversation? You guys wanna talk production? You guys wanna talk about building your massive teams? Like, where do you see yourself as far as your business goes? I mean, I can just add that for me, it's all about skill. Because you can have all the AI in the world, you can have all the systems in the world, yeah. but when you finally make that connection with that person that's looking to buy or sell, you need to have the skill level to be able to pre-qualify and assess what their needs are. Correct. And the last two, three years, I'm sorry, but we, the majority of it was order taking. Mm. See, a lot of people entered the market that didn't really know what they were doing. They thought, oh, okay, this is easy money, but really it's not. You have to have the skill. So we're focusing on fundamentals again, buyer consultations, seller consultations. For example, like if somebody says, how's the market? Depends. What are you looking to do? Buy or sell? Sell. Okay, depends. What are you selling? When did you buy it? Because if you bought it three years ago, you bought at the peak. If you bought it 10 years ago, you should sell. But it also depends on where, what your motivation is, things like that. So I find that a lot of agents now are struggling because they lack the skills and that's really what it's all about. Because I don't care how many systems you've got, when that phone rings, if you don't know what to say and you don't know how to help that person, they're going to move on. So Communication we're skills. On. Communication Actually skills. Actually talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but taking care of them, showing them that you care mm -hmm. through knowledge and, and giving them the stats and giving them the facts and so they can make an informed decision. What, what if there was a way to train artificial intelligence to actually have those skills to qualify people for you? That would be very powerful. What if I told you I already did that? I would say, show me. You want to test it out right now? Do it sure. live on the podcast? Yeah. Sure. Take out your phone. Let's go. All right. Oh, this is going to blow your mind. I'm going to have you guys text this number right here. <clears throat> you guys let me know when you're ready. Ready. 786 882 and 9190. Okay. And say anything. Hello. Yeah, hey, just what's up? How text are you? And see what happens. But I agree, man. Like, <clears throat> like when I started in real estate, I didn't care anything about like building relationships, how to talk to people. I was just like, let me close a bunch of deals. Yeah. Cause it was just like 2021 when I started back in 2003 and four. Um, but then when I lost everything, kind of like how we're going through now, this downturn that taught me, okay, you know, I've got to learn how to create lifelong relationships yep. with people. So um, you're right. <clears throat> Especially when the market goes down. Cause a lot of these people what do y'all do for buyer leads there i mean for like you know we have zillow is zillow there mm -hmm. in canada yeah people yeah buy we, zillow it, leads? there's no there's no zillow leads that we can actually buy who, who do y'all buy leads from uh there? we have y lopo you know your usual Google so like the agents that do that yeah right and depended all their business on that mm -hmm. yeah. they're probably not doing that hot this year i would imagine right the, the issue is i have i think there's some value there but everybody has the same leads for the most part so my they give team, the same leads to everybody. Yeah, for the oh, most part. Oh wow! So it's kind oh, of yeah. Messed I up. mean, yeah. each and every lead will register on five, six different websites, and that's all going to different agents. So if you are not picking up the lead uh, within five minutes, you know it's bye bye birdie, right? So if you're on that, and then you have AI on top of that, even if if you have AI, when you have AI, you still need to follow up. Mm -hmm. That's already right? doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm doing it right now. I'm having a yeah. conversation with your AI. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and so go ahead it's and test good. it. It's, it's kind of funny. You guys texted at the same thing. I'm looking to sell, but you can say looking to buy. So you want to buy in Canada. So or you, you can just buy say anything. hello. It'll be yeah. like, hey, how are you doing today? What can I do to help you? It's very oh. cool. Yeah. Ba right. Basically, so we, what we found is any single time that you're doing a buyer consultation before that consultation, <laughs> yeah. you're qualifying them because sure. you guys are experts. You're not going to waste your time going out to meet with someone randomly. Yeah. So you're going to ask them usually three or four things. What's your, t what's your budget? What's your time frame? Uh, are you working with an agent? Are you pre approved? Yep. We could program the AI to automatically ask that prior to actually booking you on an appointment. And then once it books you on an appointment, it goes straight to a calendar. You have to do that regardless one way or the other. Yep. The issue is majority of these leads end up not turning out. Facebook yep. leads, Zillow leads, whatever they may be, they're just not good. So now we set up the automation so that if you don't want to go ahead and buy in the next 90 days, we will follow up with them for you for the rest of your life. Mm. So I am one of those people that do believe you could follow up on the automation. 
and just get that entire process like long term to be fully automated. But I am 100 percent in agreement with you. Once they're ready to buy or sell, AI can't do that. AI yeah. can't take over and close. So I think closing is going to be remaining for the agents and then AI will kind of take care of the rest. You know, when you, and when you know how to present, the close is natural. You don't have to close if you're a good presenter. Yeah. So often people say to me, I can't close. No, no, you can't present. Because when you present, you don't have to close. Correct. The, 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 you know, the, the partners look at each other, they go, honey, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. You don't even ask. <coughs> that when you, when you get so good and you're so in flow, you don't have to close, bro. Yeah. They close themselves because yeah. you're presenting so well. And the real presentation is the prequel. The strength in your pre-qualifying shows that seller how much you care. Yes. That's the real presentation. Mm -hmm. Whereas most people say, you got to sell. Okay, I'll be there too. Well, hold up. Hold up. Let me slow it down a second. Just like the doctor. Pre-qual, like the questions you're asking before yeah. you come. Why are you selling? Like, yeah, why are you yeah. selling? Why are you blah, blah, going? Blah, blah, go deeper and deeper and people deeper. don't do Most new agents say, oh, I got to go. I got an appointment. Well, hold yeah. up. You got an opportunity. You don't have a real. And then the presentation there. is the listing well, presentation you mm -hmm. say saying. The presentation for me is the pre-qual. Mm -hmm. this, the pre-qualifying, that's the real presentation. So it's like when I show up tomorrow after you've asked all the questions, if everything I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that yeah. we can sell your home, are you ready to sign? Yes, yeah. no, or maybe. Do you do a full-blown listing presentation though? Over the or phone? Oh, at, in person? In person, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Do you have a PowerPoint? You, you sit down with a PowerPoint the or what? Just pre-mail them the package beforehand. Okay. They review it. We call them to ask if they reviewed it. Do you so have it's any a pre-listing presentation basically. It's a pre-list. So when yeah. you show up, it's cool. 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And you already asked them three times when I show up, are you ready to sign? Yeah. Yes. No, or maybe. Okay. No, or if it's no, or maybe yeah. no problem. I understand why they give us the objections. Now we know what they are going in. Yeah. So it's power contacts. Yeah. That's what I call them. Right. Power contacts. I want to go in knowing the intention is there. I it's not just people, a CMA. Like, you either got the listing before you even showed up to the appointment. Like, like yeah. as long as they looked you up and they looked at your resume and they checked everything out, like they already know if they want to work with you or not. Agreed. You're just going there to kind of seal the deal. That's the way I see it. Agreed. Yeah. So mine was so different, dude. I, I didn't have any social media. Yeah. I barely had a website. I never did pre-listing or a listing presentation. I did one listing presentation. I was like, this is awkward. Yeah. I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> and I was like, well, I thought about it. I was like, all right, would I, would I give, would, if this was my mom, would I sit down and make her watch this PowerPoint or would I send her a pre-listing package? And it was like, no, I'm like, why am I, I should be treating everyone like they're my mom or dad. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm never going to do this ever again. Um, and I didn't really have anywhere where people could go. I didn't have like testimonials anywhere or anywhere where I could find no. anything. So it's like, um, there's so many different ways you can there's do no, this thing. You know, you got to figure out what works for you, yeah, and um, what makes you feel comfortable in the process and everything. So, how, how you say you're a team leader? Yeah. How many is on your team? Just myself and three other agents and two okay. admin. But there's no like you just said it. There's no right or wrong way. There's not to run your business. It's what makes you feel authentic. Even and like genuine. scripts, you know. I'm like, you know, like it, quit trying to like set the appointment, you know, and just figure out why they want to do something and try to help them do it. Yeah. You know, but the appointment thing works for a lot of people too. You know, um, there's so many different ways to do it. So, what did, how many listings did you have you guys picked up this year? So far, I think it's about 80. We're on track for 110. <coughs> nice. And that's an uptick from last year because yeah. inventory has rose Correct. across the whole market. We're getting a lot. So, I love this market, just to be clear. This is like the perfect market. <laughs> there is like, so much the opportunity, market. guys. So, yeah. like, I started in 2009. <laughs> which <clears throat> the market was, you know, a buyers to balance market. That's when the real skill comes out because you have so many expireds, so many FISBOs. I was a FISBO killer, bro. So I love that because now, now the value shows. They're not just giving it to their cousins, friends, sisters, aunt who got their license as a, as a favor. Now yeah. they need, they need the results. So I, just to be clear, I love this market. Mm. What, what was your for sale by owner like pitch to just get so many for sale by owner listings? You know what? My first FISBO that I ever got, I was door knocking with my son in the stroller and I knocked on their door and I said, when, hey, when do you plan on hiring the right agent for the job of selling your home? And she turns around, she goes, is that a baby? I said, yeah, I need diapers. When do you plan on hiring the right? <laughs> and she laughed just like that. Yeah. She didn't sign right there, but four weeks later she did because I followed up every week. Hey, have you tried this? Have yep. you tried this? Have you tried this? I kept giving her value, giving her value. And then I double ended it and made $35,000. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> How long was the follow up process before you got the listing? Four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. I tell everyone it's usually between like four to eight contacts before yeah. you actually go ahead and lock it down. It's yeah. such a follow up game. It's the all for sale in the by owners. So let me ask you this what if you automated the follow up with AI? Yeah, I'm all about automating. What, how were you following up? You were calling them or Calling them and dropping them? by. I was, I was new, right? So I didn't have much going on. Correct. So my whole focus was on getting that listing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were calling. I was calling you can't and I was really also dropping use by. AI or to drop by or call. Yeah. We could use voicemails, gift the campaigns. <coughs> I yeah, would just be like, are you doing an open house on Sunday? They're always saying, yeah, cool. 
and I'd drop by the open house. Yeah, get face to face, just continue yeah. building relationships, everything that way. Yeah. yeah. On average, it used to be seven to eight follow ups. That was t- eleven years ago. Now wow. I find it's more. Uh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It's taking longer now. So what would you do? Like create a create a voicemail. It's like, hey, it's Ricky checking in with you. Yeah. Or whatever. We're working on a for sale by owner follow up campaign. Like, that's why I ask. And basically, we could record the entire voicemail. Anything you're going to say to one for sale by owner, you're probably going to say to the next. Mm. You could just customize it by changing their name. And then you just go ahead. You record this voicemail. It'll go Changing out over eight weeks. Name. You can send so actual send it, mailers. So record a different voicemail for each one you did. You with would a have different to do name. one individually. Yeah. A good one is Monday. So Monday. So let's say, hey, just checking in to see how your open house went. Yeah. How many offers did you get? It's almost just as quick. Just a dollar number and leave the voicemail. Well, what if you just recorded that and we sent it out to thirty for sale by owners at once? Well, you can't. You said different names. So you have to record a different one for each person. If you want to customize it, yeah. Right. But That's if you want to go out to the masses, like that was you got to be closer to your mic. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, I would love to collaborate with you on that to give you some scripts I'm that we yeah. use that, that are very powerful. Interesting. Do you send mailers as well? Uh, yes, we'll send a business card with a note card in the mail. In the mail, okay, for, cool. For, for a physical, and then yeah. emails or anything like that, or yep. is it just we use a CRM that does some some automation until they respond. Okay. Are you still doing for sale by owners? Yeah, now. But the last three years they were all selling. Now that the market softened, mm. it's back. This yeah. is like for sale by owner land. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Shane has yeah. listed like 50 for sale by owners this year. Ooh, 10 this wow. month. Like, listen, need our help. Who is this? Shane Noblin in oh. North Carolina. Mm. Damn. Yeah. He's a beast. Yeah, these people need our help. Yeah. So we got Did he there. use AI? No. No. It was just straight up yeah. following up. Yeah, he calls. Like, he's a master dude. He's just like, I was driving by your house and I saw your roof. Uh, like, and he'll say something about the roof. Yeah. It's nuts what he does. He customizes every little contact. Oh, man. He'll find them online on Facebook or like when he calls agents or he call, when he calls anybody, he looks them up and he finds something specific about them. Mm. And then mm. he'll call them about that. Oh, you know? yeah. Like he spends the time to figure out one little thing he can call about, you know, um, That's smart. And he crushes it. He calls less people because he has to do more research, but mm. they're way higher quality. So yeah, he's nice. going deep with people. He's going deep. Power yeah. Contacts. And he keeps going deep. He just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. What do you think about that, like, transactional these days versus relational? What do you mean? Like, you know, we're taught to go wide, you know, talk to a lot more people. You need to yeah. double up on your actions. Okay. but. You know, these days it's almost like you said, you have to go deep with people, less contacts, but go deep with people, like you said. I yeah. think you can do both. Yeah? Yeah. Because, I mean, like, it as you're <coughs> as you're making your calls or making your contacts or whatever, um, you know, like, throughout, like, a, what, are we, what are you, how, many, how long are you going to make calls for? Let's say four to five hours a day. <laughs> I mean, dude, even if you're going deep on a conversation that's going to last, say, 30 minutes tops. Right. Yeah. You know, and then get a bunch of like three minute conversations in, then another thirty like you know what I'm saying? You've got plenty of time to do to go deep and wide. And like going deep and wide means working on your short term business and long term business at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. If you have a system in place that nurtures everybody forever that you ever talk to. Right. Um and most people are either they're either working the short game, like just close the deal now. If you're not ready now, then I'm gonna forget about you. When really the people that they're saying forget about you too, those are the clients that buy later. If you would accumulate all those, would like triple your business in three years. Yeah. You know, as they come back around to you when they do decide to do something. Most people are just working one or the other. I see as like you have the database in itself, which you should be nurturing. Yeah as much as you can, as frequently as possible, as automated as possible, you don't really invest money into it. And then the second that someone refers you business or becomes a client themselves, then you start investing into the relationship. <laughs> Messaging mm-hmm. them on birthdays, buying them gifts, yeah. client anniversaries, stuff like that. Yeah. So you have your VIP list and then you have your database. And I tell everyone, nurture your database as passively as possible with email, text, and voice. Doesn't cost you a single dollar. It runs automatic. And then once they go ahead and they transact with you or they refer you business, start investing into them the same way you invest in Zillow or another like online real estate platform. I think the key is, yeah, I love what you said there, but the whole transactional thing, right? When I was younger, like when I just got started, I wanted to get to 100 deals. Like I was obsessed. I got to crush that 100 deal. And then I got to it and then I realized, shit, you can succeed in making a transaction and fail in making a client. Yeah. And that, that was me. I was doing a lot of transactions, but I don't know if I was succeeding in making clients. Correct. Yeah. Because I'm like, why are some of these people not calling me back after? So when I switch my mentality to, like John said, like making it more about, not about the transaction, make it about the person. Correct. Like I used to have team goals, for example, okay, we do a hundred deals. We're all going to Vegas on my dime. Yeah. 
Whereas now it's complete. We don't even talk how many deals can we do. It's like how many Google reviews can you get this week? Mm, mm, nice. Get it? Yeah. Because Google that reviews. speaks more volumes than anything else. Correct. So, so what were you saying, like transactional versus relational? relational. Where were you going with that? Well, I think we need to be relational. And okay. uh, everything's built on relationships these days. It's relationship mm -hmm. marketing instead of, you know, just get a lead, call them, call them, call them until they're ready to transact. I, I, yeah, I call them one time. If they don't answer, what am I going to do? Chase somebody, chase a ghost? See, here's the thing. When you call somebody over and over and over again that just continues not to answer, Yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it, each dial is so crucial, mm. Okay. Because of the, the ripple effect, like the long-term snowball of that, right? So like that dial was just wasted on someone who probably is not going to answer because they haven't answered the last two or three calls. Is that why people ghost? Because you just not providing value? No, they ghost because something threw a red flag in, in, in the mm -hmm. communication, right? For example, I'm not really ready. You, you, being, you being what should be a professional isn't picking up on the clues that I'm not ready right? Because I'm a nice person. I'm basically kind of saying, it's kind of like, you don't, you, you know, <clears throat> like you like somebody uh, wants you to come to dinner, they invite you to dinner. And you know, you probably can't go. Chances are, you're probably just not going, but you're like, I'm gonna try. Um, right? Yeah. And then the person's like, well, you know, they hit you back. They're like, what you think you gonna make it or not? And yeah. back of your mind, you're thinking, no, I'm not. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm blah, blah, you know, it's the same thing with clients. They kind of like will kind of lead us down this road, mm. and then we don't really pick up on that with our lack of experience. And then, and then now we're trying to set the appointment, right? You know, and they're like, "Wait a minute, I'm not ready to do anything." Now this person's trying to get in here and yeah, make everything move close. real fast and go to a contract and let's set up a consultation. And I'm not even ready for any of this stuff. I'm just not going to answer the phone because this guy's yeah. weird. Yeah, he's not even picking up on what I'm saying. So he's not listening. <clears throat> That's one thing. Another thing is um, just like along the same lines, just not connecting with the person. You know what I'm that's saying? That's what I'm talking like about. Just, relational what I'm versus thinking. transactional. Just, yeah. Not connecting. Right. With and them. it's just like they just feel like this <clears throat> cold. They don't, they feel like it's just, they can feel that it's transactional yeah. for you, even though you feel like you're articulating how much you care about them. You don't realize that that 2% transactional you're trying to make it mm. really was like stuck out like a sore thumb oh, in, in the whole situation and the prospects like mm -mm, mm -mm. i can go find you're an agent that i feel 100 comfortable with like really yeah. has my back because there's so many agents that's mm -hmm. the yeah. thing like they feel like they can ghost an agent because there's 10 more you know right here trying to talk to me too so what why <laughs> you know why am i going to give this a chance when i hear that again you said the two percent you think you're 98% relational, but the 2% that you're transactional gets magnified. It, it, it's the same thing with confidence. Mm -hmm. right. Like like if you're not 110% confident, then they see it. If there's 1% of you that doesn't believe mm -hmm. like that you can sell this house or you know that you're, you're confident in whatever, just yeah. 1%. It's coming out in your tone. Mm. It's it's coming out. You mm. don't realize it. Yeah. You, you you go back you go back home to the office and you're like what happened there? Right. What did I do wrong? They went with another agent yeah. or they ghosted you and you're like, what happened? Mm. You know, but you don't even realize, you don't even realize it. But from their perspective, you're just this desperate, unconfident, mm. transactional person, but you perceived it as this professional, relational, relational trying to help somebody. Yeah. You're doing everything your coach and broker told you to do. Uh, you know what I mean? So so that so that's 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 where like the line is between like yeah. people failing and not failing in this business. Especially it's in this that market. one percent, two percent lack of confidence or <clears throat> you know being transactional. Um, I don't know. How would you advise them to slow it down and really listen then? Because most it, people it, don't. It, it's it's from it's from volume of conversations. Okay. Mm. You know, and like people have like hundreds of conversations and they're not quite there and things aren't clicking on all cylinders and they're like it's not happening for me yet it's like keep going get to mm -hmm. a, a couple thousand and you know what i mean like you just need a little more experience in front of people i would suggest i think everybody as a as a real estate agent <clears throat> as they're getting into real estate like a good like full-time job while you're trying to become an agent is yeah. to serve tables mm. i love i love that you said that to, to go and serve tables because like mm -hmm. you're walking up to people you have to walk over there 
to this table of people you don't know mm -hmm. and greet them and basically get this conversation, this back and forth going about what they want to drink, how they're doing. Yep. It's like a perfect uh, exercise for like a future real estate agent. <clears throat> I, I, I think everybody should roof houses too for about a year of their life. <laughs> but did, I'm right? not going to go that hardcore <laughs> with it. But yeah. So, yeah, that and reading some books on right. communication. communication. So yeah. I love what you said because I'm Greek, come from the restaurant background, <coughs> right? But I did retail. When you do retail or in the restaurant business, what do you have to do? Talk to people. People want to deal with people that are like them and people want to deal with people that they like. Knowing that, you got to work on your versatility because when you... Otherwise, you're only going to get 25% of the people who are like you. But the problem is there's 75 of the people are nothing like you. So the chances are, well, number one, let's just, you can't motivate anybody who's not motivated. So if they're ghosting you, it could be they're just not motivated. And they see that you are going to get the job done. So maybe they're like, shit, this guy's going to actually get my home sold. I don't. That's really exactly what I'm saying. It's or, like they basically are saying, I don't want to sell. Yeah. You're not picking up on the cues. Yeah. And they're like, this guy's moving too fast. Yeah. I'm just going to block him. Or... Yeah. Or, or call the cops. No. You're not treating them the way they want to be treated. So like the engineer doesn't want to be treated the same way as the, you know, actor does. The engineer wants facts and figures, whereas the driver's like, let's go, let's go. Like how much, how much is the house? How much are you charging me? When you start learning the versatility on the different personality styles, your, my income at least went from 300,000 to a million in one year because I learned that I was treating everybody the same. The where, way I want to be treated. Where but did not you learn everybody that? Was it like through a book, a coach? Like, like where did you actually like get the training for that? Uh, well, I started to assess why is my closing ratio so low, right? And I realized the people that I wasn't closing were similar and not mm -hmm. similar to me because I'm very expressive. Yeah. I talk a lot, as you can see. And, uh, but not everyone's like that. So I was like, why am I not being able to convince the amiables or the specifically drivers and analyticals? Like I was repelling them with my talking. Mm -hmm. So then I learned, okay, they want facts and figures, the analyticals, like the engineer, the accountant, give them what they want. And then I can show them, hey, he's like me. He likes facts and figures. So uh, it was it was books, a lot of books, and hanging out with a lot of people like you know like John and I have known each other for years, and John and I have very different personalities, but we were also on the same trajectory, which shows you that people with different personalities can be successful in real estate with completely different personalities, but wow. we were getting the same results. Mm. So when you hang out with people that are different, you work on your versatility, dude. It's all, like the energy. I love coming to Vegas because. Like, as soon as I land, bro, it's like, I know there's some ballers around here, number one. <laughs> and then I hear music and stuff, and I'm like, this whole, this, this place like energizes me. Yeah. You know? I'm like, yeah. Let me, and like just being around ballers, people like hard workers that have done things, it just rubs off on you. Now, if somebody, dude, if somebody calls, if I go somebody and they keep calling me, I'm calling the cops <laughs> <laughs> straight up. <laughs> like, I'm, Dude, I'm I am like stage five clinger. Like I I don't want to do anything with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. when they go to me, I call. I mean, I call them like once and I send a text, and if they don't answer, that's it. They're on my weekly email. You know how many buyers ghosted me after I showed them property like for a week straight? Ghosted me, never heard from them. Three years later, they call me and I see their name on their on the caller ID, and I'm mm. thinking, oh, okay, here he is, right? He, here wow. he is, because I remember I remember who it is. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'll answer, and they say, hey, Ricky, you know, remember me? And I'm like, yeah, I remember you. <laughs> Ghostbusters. I sure do. And like sometimes they'll just act like nothing happened, and they're like, okay, we saw this property over here, want to buy this property, and they'll go buy a property. And then sometimes they'll be like, hey, I just want to, you know. Say, you know, if you don't want to work with me, that's fine. You know, I'm sorry oh, wow. for whatever. Yeah, some of them have said that. And I'm like, no, it's no, it's no big deal at all. And I feel like I'm in the driver's seat now, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, but I, I'm like, oh, no, I, I'm, I'll work with you and everything. Just, um, just, just know that I know what's up. <laughs> I, I know what the possibility is that you're going to ghost me and never talk to me ever again. So as long as we're on understanding that you're not going to do that ever again, we're good. Mm -hmm. you know? How do you feel about putting them on the contract to have a buyer exclusive agreement with you? Do what? Do a buyer exclusive prior to working with them. I don't I do not do buyer exclusive. I've never signed a buyer exclusive. I've never been on a listing, presentation, any of that stuff. But you don't think that would help with it? Like the no, because they can walk away from that too. Yeah. They can true. walk away from that anytime yeah. they want to. So yeah. all that's going to do is put a wedge in between the possible relationship saying, hey, we're friends because you're signing this piece of paper. Hey, I'm going to help you because you're going to sign this piece of paper. You have to sign that piece of paper for me to want to help you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to walk away from doing business with me, then that's the risk that I'm taking as a real estate agent helping somebody. You can still walk away even if you sign this. So why am I even going to have you sign this? You know what I'm saying? 
No. And everyone's trying to get him to sign that paper, right? Not me. And I tell people, I'm like, why? It's just, it's like the, the amount of clients you'll lose, let's say you lose 10, 15% of the buyers that you put that in front of because you did that. You know how many millions of dollars that is over the course of like 5, 10, 15 years in mm -hmm. your business mm -hmm. that you lost because of that, that motion where if you wouldn't offer that and just helped everybody do everything, the ones that are going to go use somebody else are going to go use somebody else no matter if there's a piece of paper signed. It's Doesn't not going to stop anybody. Yeah. yeah. So in Canada, they're changing the law in a couple of months where if you don't have a buyer contract with a buyer, you can't show them another agent's I home. think there's some states here that are really? like that. It's like yeah, mandatory. Okay. It's new. Aren't there states here? They do that? I, not that I'm aware of, no. I I, yeah. I, I I was, or you know how agents are. I'll say, don't do buyer agents agreement. And they're like, our state makes us do it when probably don't even <laughs> make them do it, you know, just because yeah. they want to get me. But, <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, it may or may not. But, dude, if it's a law, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, I, I'm sorry, but you got to sign this for me to be able to show. That's, that's different, different that's different. than yeah. Yeah. it's my option, you know. Yeah. So what do you think about this? Uh, you know, they're probably going to switch it around where the buyers have to pay the buyer's agents. I don't now. think they're going to switch it around. I think that um, I think that that's very out there if that were to happen. Yeah. I think that I think that the lawsuit is is this happening in Canada, too, or yeah. just here? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what's happening in Canada. OK, but here there's a lawsuit where basically a group of owners, you know, are suing these you know huge corporations it's like there's a bunch of mom pauls out there brokerages that are doing the same thing why are you not suing them as well mm -hmm. well because they're not huge billion dollar corporations that they, they know they can get to settle for 55 yeah. million dollars right yeah, yeah. it's all just a money grab like mm -hmm. they did the deal they were happy with the deal they hired a listing agent to, to sell the property for five percent what the listing agent does with the money that you that's like saying okay mr roofer you want to roof my house for 13 grand go for it they do it a crew shows up you pay the guy thirteen thousand. Mm. what he did what if he paid the crew nine thousand out of the 13 because he subcontracted it it doesn't matter to you right you yeah. sign a contract or job whatever a quote to get the job done for a certain amount mm. yeah. so it's crazy that this is even happening but now anywhere <laughs> offered to settle out for 83 and a half million Remax offered these aren't final, right? Remax offered to settle out for fifty five million. It's like wow, like the whole thing is crazy. And then these companies are now offering like it's up to like one hundred and thirty million, one hundred forty million that two companies so far. And NAR is still in the lawsuit. Um, a couple other ones are still in the lawsuit. And now everybody's like, well, if this lawsuit goes through, then buyers are going to have to pay their own commissions and all this and all that. I don't believe that. I think what's going to happen is there may be a few extra disclosures that has to be signed yeah. so that it protects everybody and yeah. business will, will go on like normal. If worst case scenario happens and buyers do have to pay the buyer agent fee, who cares? I mean, okay, you, you got to pay me now, right? Like in, in um, Australia, they operate like this. Mm. In the buyer agent, what happens is the listing agent gets the listing, and normally the li the buyers come straight to the listing agent, right? <clears throat> and there's really no representation for the buyer. You know, that's what's going to suck out of all this if something worst case scenario happens. But the buyer may, th down there, the buyer agents, what they do is they take a retainer, mm. you know, two thousand, five thousand, whatever it is up front, and then the remaining if they get the deal done, but they take an upfront fee, oh. right? They take an upfront fee like a lawyer would, a retainer, yeah. and then they go out there and and um, and get to work for the buyer. They've paid them some money, mm -hmm. you know, and now I'm going to get to work for you. So, no, I mean, if you're a buyer's agent, heck, That's <laughs> you may be getting paid up front. Yeah, yeah. Even you know, know what you I mean? Get the job done getting you the home, mm -hmm. you're The paying. fact of the matter is, though, like people are still going to buy or sell. Yeah. People are still going to want to be represented. And the industry will find a way. I was even saying that mortgages may create a product that figures in the buyer agent uh, fee. People are commenting on my video like, oh, that's crazy. That, that'll never happen. It's like, well, did you think 40-year loans would happen? Yeah. Did you think 1% down loans? Would, like, they'll do anything. Yeah. Like, if something happens, like, <laughs> the government and mortgage companies, they'll figure out a way to, to, to make this whole thing work. But it's just a non-issue, bro. Are you worried about it? No, I'm. You know, the, things do change all the time. We just are resistant to change. We don't want to change. 
right? But when it comes and then you get used you to gotta it. You got to flow f- like water, bro. <laughs> you got to flow like water. Be water, my friend. If something happens, you, 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 <laughs> you mean, okay, well, what what is the industry like? How, what's the process now? Oh, okay. I'm going to crush that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, show me show me how this is going to be done from here you, on out. You yeah. got you got to learn to control the controllables. So, if I don't have control over what's taking <coughs> place, if it's something above my pay grade and the government's imposing this, why am I stressing over it? I can't control it. What I can control is what I do and what how I react to what happens. I can't control what will happen if it's outside of my my universe, right? If the government's imposing it, I can't do shit. All I can do is control how I react to it. I'll figure it out. So while everyone else is freaking out for six months, I'm figuring I'm going to pivot and just keep going. You can't freak out. It's kind of like if agents go away <laughs> completely, you know, kind of like, um, like travel, um, agents. travel agencies, yeah. right? Tra- the brick and mortar, the travel agents. Mm-hmm. Um, my cousin's actually a travel agent. Mm-hmm. Like he makes good money, actually. They're still travel agents. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> like it's all online and he gets all of his customers that way and he wow. he, he organizes and books their trips and he does, he makes good money. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot less of them, right? And it's a completely different industry. Yeah. And this, that, and the other. But there should be less of them. If you're not good at it, get out. I'm well, gr- uh, so I'm Greek, born and raised in Canada, but I'm Greek. We've right? made that super. <laughs> no, hold up. I got a point. I got a point. My point is, I went to Greece for a month. I hired a travel agent. Why? Because I'm too busy. I don't know every island in Greece. I don't know all that stuff. So yeah. I, I yeah. even hired a travel agent because yeah. I'm too busy. And he's there. He's local. And he figured it all out. We paid him a fee, and we were happy to. Yeah. So yeah. I, think, I think that right there, the fact that travel agents still exist on a smaller scale, of course, um, but you have to understand the ease of booking a trip online is it's not the same process as buying a house. Yeah. I just I just I don't see that ever happen. But if it did, where did all the travel agents go that got out of the business? They got real estate. estate. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> you teed that off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I, they might have, but they, the point is, is they went off and did something else productive, especially the ballers, the hustlers, the ones that, you know, you think the ones that are in the business right now are making more money than the ones that were killing it before? Like of like the, the, the few I, remaining yeah, I one. Do. I do because you got, di- you got you got digital marketing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got way more market share. Yeah. Right. Digital marketing, way more market share. You know what? It's probably a growing industry. Like I, 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 I bet, yeah. I, I, I bet yeah. you travel agents like the number of travel agents is actually like it went away and now it's settled out. And I bet you the number of travel agents are actually growing yeah. now. Mm. I bet you. Well, listen, traveling to me is a nightmare. Like if <coughs> I have my assistant do it or I have Geo try to set it up, like just the time, it takes like an hour, hotel, flight, car, everything, like but organizing the entire thing. Yep. If there is a way where they could actually save you money, which in essence, your time is money, right? Yep. Why wouldn't you hire one? Like, hey, we're making a good, pretty good, uh, what do you call it? Argument for the travel agent, mm. you know? So yeah. I don't think Listen. agents are ever going away. Yeah. I think there's always going to be people that But need if they agents. do, bring it on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm ready for agents. Like, that's it, 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 like the market. You know, I'm like, prices aren't going to go down. Prices are going to keep going up. And, uh, you know, buy houses. And people are like, oh, yeah, this is going to age real well. Well, I'm going to save this video forever. And I'm going to show you when the market crashes and stuff like that. And I'm like, you don't get it, bro. Like, <laughs> if prices go down, you know how much money I'm going to make? Like, I'm not saying prices are going to stay or go up because that's what I want to happen because I'm that's going to make me more money. Yeah. No, if prices go down, you know how much money I'm going to make? I, I welcome the prices. If, if you go through a 2008, you're not scared of nothing when it comes to the real estate market, number one. Yeah. But, like, <clears throat> how many buyers do you have right now that that are waiting on prices to come down? Countless. It's the Countless. same, it's the same buyers that didn't get in because they didn't want to compete. And now they're waiting. Yep. Now they're waiting because they, they're waiting for prices to go down. Exactly. Yeah. Keep exactly. Waiting. But think about how many people are sitting there waiting on prices to go down. Yeah. Okay. Now, now all these people saying crash is going to happen. But they've been saying it for two or three years. Yeah. Right. Everything keeps, keeps doing phenomenal, except for the amount of transactions and the monthly mortgage payments and stuff like that. But just think of how crazy it would be if prices come down like how crazy your business would be. It would skyrocket. It would be insane, dude. It would be insane. You know? So like these people are talking or or act like, um, you know, I'm trying to pump the market up and uh, that's all I want. It's like, no, you don't even, you don't even get it. Like this is what I see when I open up my phone every day. (laughs) 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 
<laughs> the ooh yeah. gets longer and longer. Yeah, it does. The ooh gets longer. It? What's the longest ooh you've ever done? I was going to do one where it was just that the whole time. Yeah, one reel should just be the ooh. Wait, can you do it right now? I want to hear. That's do, what I do should you do. Prep for it? Do you do like a, like an inhale? Like, you ever hold your breath underwater and you kind of do like. Yeah. Do you like prep for that? Is like a we, we, need to, we, we need to film it, like, film me doing it. We should all do it right now. Films. You got three cameras yeah. on yeah. We got the Lead yeah. us in a woo. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll lead us out in a woo. Yeah. yeah. We'll end the podcast on a ooh. <laughs> That, that was a bit. Let me see. Yeah. No, it's it's funny. I, I I was in bed. It was like nine thirty at night. I'm scrolling. I'm like next to my girlfriend, and like literally the entire like thing. It's just pitch quiet. All you hear is ooh. <laughs> like, what are you something watching? She thought you were watching so porn. Or something? What are you watching? Yeah. Oh, man. oh my goodness. Let's see if there's any good articles out. Oh. I haven't done one in a minute. <laughs> is that Hello mm. Kitty on your phone? What's yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. Actually, my daughter put this on at, at church like three weeks ago. Mm. It must be they must have like some crazy glue they put on that stuff. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna find uh, a thing and all. So, so John, what, what do you tell a buyer agent that's on your team that's closing 50 transactions a year, a hundred percent buyer based? What do you tell them if it does go in that route and if they collect their, their own commission? If it what? If they have to like actually collect their own commission, if it goes that route. If it goes that route, mm -hmm. yeah, then we just have to up our value at the end of the day. And uh, I would say the same thing, like, you know, a lot of buyer's agents uh, at that time will probably drop out of the business. Oh, it's over. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly when we should kick it up a notch. Because mm -hmm. right now, I tell you, my team doubled Okay. in the past two months yeah. because the market's changing. Transactions are being squeezed. So they all need help. Yes. Right. So it's a huge opportunity. If anything changes, it's going to be a huge opportunity for people who are committed Correct. and are mm -hmm. willing to work. So I think I would tell that buyer's agent, just say, hey, just keep your head down, keep moving. And you know, yeah. you're know, you going to see people quiet quitting or quitting altogether. And that's your opportunity to take market share. Yeah. And then, I, I, DK, do you feel like you should be targeting sellers or targeting buyers? Because I tell everyone, like, they're, they're all the same. They're all humans. Like, Both. you don't know when they're going to be buying or selling. Like, yeah. what's, what's your strategy there? Any, anybody that needs help. You know, we'll, we'll flow, like you said, water. Like, real estate is not fixed. It's fluid. Yeah. So sometimes I'm we're working with buyers. Sometimes we're working with sellers. But the thing that, the, the way I look at this, if this if the buyer's got to cover the cost, at the end of the day, I'll say to the buyer, listen, we'll, we'll just negotiate out of the price. Yeah. So like if I if you got to pay me 25k and the house is a million bucks, we'll we'll just negotiate the seller down in the amount that my fee is. Is that fair? Done. Correct. You know what I mean? It's an easy thing to overcome. But I'll help anybody that needs help. And I don't care if it's 200,000 or 2 million. Everybody gets the same treatment. Are right. you asking so. from a perspective of lead prospecting? For for buyers or sellers? Why are you asking this buyer or seller question? Cuz everyone's always like, so I have a ton of buyer agents who are like, I'm going to start focusing on sellers and I was like, what were we focusing on before? Like, weren't you just focusing on everyone? But no, they're probably like doing a buyer leads, Zillow leads, or or or, or making uh, YouTube videos that about their city, trying to attract people that are moving there. Uh -huh. Those are buyer activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are buyer focused, buyer heavy activities. Okay. Right. So for me, I'm like, all right, well, everybody's going to make money at six, seven o'clock at night in real estate. Mm -hmm. Everybody. It's your choice whether you're at home chilling, eating dinner with the family, relaxing, not a care in the world, while eight of your 21 listings are being shown by agents who make YouTube videos and do Zillow leads, right? Because mm -hmm. they're, they're buyer heavy focus. So they're got buyers running around all hours of the night while I'm property owner focused, not for listings per se, but those are the highest quality prospects. They buy and sell. Yeah. They're the highest quality buyers. And when they give me a listing, that's the highest form of leverage for a real estate agent. So it's like everybody's choice. Like this girl the other day, they're like, she's like, should I send this letter to renters? I'm like, why? <laughs> and, she, and she's like, well, buyers. I'm like, but you could spend the same effort Going talking to a property it, owner yeah. that already owns the property versus a renter who may, may not ever buy. And if they do... You have to educate them on the first time home buyer education, mm -hmm. and they're going to run you all around town all hours and day. Uh, I, 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 you can do that, but is it the most efficient? No. Focus on property owners. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to be at home at night, chilling with the family, while you, superhero on YouTube is going to show all my listings. Yeah. 
What What are your thoughts on uh, people going big on YouTube? I mean, you know, you got the Levi. If they do it, guys. if they do it for the purpose of trying to get listings, yeah, and trying to attract property owners, right? So, for example, if you take your YouTube and you make great videos that get great engagement. Um, number one, around your listings to try to attract a buyer for your specific listing, and B, to use the data and analytics on the back end to impress the seller on your mm -hmm. next listing. How many mm -hmm. hits I got? Yeah, like, I'm, like I, yeah, I'm yeah. getting, you know, I'm getting 20,000 views a month on my YouTube, and I'm hitting, you know, you know, 5,000 profiles a month on Instagram, and I'm going to be pushing your property on my platform. Um, you know, any agent can put your property on MLS, but I have my own platform here of people that are circulating my content in the local market, mm -hmm. right? That's that's my value proposition that I have differently than the next agent that's going to walk through here. So if you're utilizing social media to do two things, try to drive buyers to your listings, A, mm -hmm. and B, put out consistent content just for the sake of trying to get as many views and engagement as you can per month to impress the next seller at the next listing appointment, then I think it's great. But if you're using it just to try to attract buyers to you, I'm not a fan of that. Mm. Is that the future of real estate prospecting though? Do you think YouTube? It's not saturated yet. No. But people are getting on it. You don't yeah. think it's the future I, I think, of prospecting? I think, no, I don't think it's the future. I think it's already here. It's already here. I think people are utilizing it. It's not saturated. It to the, to the, I think people are, well, I don't know that it'll ever be saturated because people are scared to make videos. Mm, you know, it's, a, it's the same yeah. thing with, it's the same thing with um, cold calling, right? Like it, nobody wants it's to wide it. open because yeah. nobody's calling. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, I, th I think engagement is underrated. Like everyone's so focused on being content heavy, which drives tons of inbound leads, but no one is sending out 100, 200 DMs a day. Nobody. Like if you send out Nobody. 200 DMs to every single person on Facebook, how often are they going to go ahead and say like, oh, I actually do need to buy or sell You know what I think is most yeah. underrated yeah. is impressions. Views. Yeah. Well, not, not saying even views. What's just the difference between an impression and a view? Like we're still well, trying to figure that out. Like, like an impression <clears throat> is somebody who just saw the content. Right versus a view is someone who I think on Instagram it's like three seconds they, they viewed it, and, watch it. And, oh, then, no, um, and then and then and then on YouTube it's like a minute I think right or oh, or it's thirty seconds or a view is like it's longer on YouTube um, for for long form on YouTube but on Instagram it's like whatever like three seconds or something like that okay. so like whether if you're just scrolling through and you I saw your video and I continued that was an impression I saw mm, it kept okay, going. Okay. A view is, oh, I saw it. Oh, you got my attention. Um, what, I watched it for more than three seconds. That's a view. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay, okay, right? okay. And then like pictures is not a video. Mm -hmm. And then on, Instagram pays attention to how long somebody sees your picture, but that you don't see that analytics on your end. Yeah. But if they just scroll through and see it, if Instagram showed it to somebody in their feed, whether they stopped, liked it, whatever, that's an impression. If somebody saw it with their eyes, mm. those are impressions are just eyeballs. So you're saying they're underrated because the more someone could like subconsciously <coughs> see your face, the more realistic you're building yes, up in their mind. This is what I mean. An impression. It's the same thing with um, emails. Okay, the email goes to the inbox. They see it in their inbox. Mm. Don't open it. That's, That's an impression. An impression. Ah. Okay? Got it. okay. So the fact that they saw it in their inbox meant something. They saw your name. They saw the subject. They saw that it hits every Wednesday. They never open it, but they're like, damn, that Ricky's consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's they're like, oh, I'm going to call right that guy. I'm going to start opening his emails two years yeah. when I decide to do something. And I'm going to call him on that fifth week I opened it. With social media, you post your open house, okay? And, and you got, you know, 100 likes. And you're like, ah, you know, or, 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 or no, I'm sorry. That's actually a lot. Um, you got, you know, 15 likes. And you're like, man, this social media stuff don't work. Well, it, you look and you got like 500 impressions, mm. which means it got 500 people saw you working, mm. right? They saw that you're at that open house. It's like, how, who's going to like an open house post, right? Nobody. Yeah. No. Yeah. But they That's saw it and it meant something. Mm. It's like Gary Vee was talking about the haters, right? People that yeah. hate on your, your content and everything. And um, he was like, you know, you know, people are hating and people are going to hate. And by the way, when you hit 100,000 on YouTube, mm -hmm. the freaks come out, yeah. bro. I mean, it's just like <laughs> nine. Stop, dude. But anyway, um, what he was saying, and that's why nobody posts content, honestly, because they'll see a they'll see a uh, celebrity 
and they'll see all the hate mm. or they'll see like an influencer and they'll see all the hate message yeah. and like i don't want nothing to do with that i'm not yeah, even going to yeah, create yeah. content yeah but what he said was you know well number one he's like don't listen to the haters he said also don't listen to the people that are praising you either don't let that get too much to your head either mm. way mm. but then he was like it's the people that are sitting back watching your content quietly not commenting not even liking but mm. they love you oh. and they love your content mm. but they don't say anything they don't like they're just like they see it and they watch it and they're like man this guy's good those are the people that you're really doing this for mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm. so and, i was at the gym last week and a guy came up to me never he's like hey just want to let you know i love what you're putting out all your content's very positive i appreciate you just keep it i go I'm, i said i <coughs> I said, oh, thanks, bro, I'm trying. He goes, no, no, you're accomplishing your goal. Just want to let you know. Oh, wow. I, that's exactly what you're talking that's about. That's deep. That's made cool. Me, made me feel good. You had no idea who he was? No. Yeah. He, he works at the gym. Awesome. And he goes, I fought you, the DK guy. Yeah. He goes, yeah, just want to let you know, like, you're making a difference. Thank you. That is awesome. Wow, that's and, awesome. And yeah. it is. It's really cool. The only danger is, and I am really bad at it, is listening to the people saying how awesome you are. Because mm -hmm. when, you, when you really listen to people say how awesome you are, it makes you really listen to the people who are saying you're you're you're, you're a piece of shit, right? You know, because if you're really listening to this, then you also take this to heart as well, mm. and you're and, and 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 it can it can mess with you. Yep. you know what I mean. And so you got to so get you're desensitized both ways now. You have to be. Uh, you have to. You have to try to good or bad. It's the way you have to be because mm. in this world, there's so many keyboard warriors, dude, that yeah. are just that just 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 type stuff for like. Why? Why would you even like say Spend something your like time to do it's that? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's so many uh, the, people like this. But that's the same thing in real estate. People make a big sale, they think they're the shit. Then they lose a client, they get depressed. Mm -hmm. yep. It's the same thing. Don't celebrate yep. yeah. for too long. Don't beat yourself up for exactly. too long. Stay neutral. Keep the no emotions between the lines. That's right. exactly what you're saying to do with social, which I love.